Sigma Tiger News all up in your grill with the hottest, juiciest beef online. What do we got today? The Green Police, Frat Boy Summer, and Boeing Scrubbed? <laughs> Sigma Tiger all up in your grill. Boom. What do we got today? The green police. Well, uh, households wince at the rising price of going green. Clean energy rules carry new taxes and stiff penalties. In Paris, flunking an efficiency check exhausts heavy costs in the property market. So, uh, yeah, Canada has a carbon tax that's increased the uh, cost for fuel, energy, uh, transportation, groceries, everything's going up for a carbon tax. So what is a carbon credit? Carbon credit is basically a credit that is the value of one ton of carbon. And every time that you reduce or prevent a ton of carbon from entering the atmosphere, you are allocated one carbon credit, which then you can sell to a country that is not reducing their carbon at all. But these carbon credits will offset their level of carbon emissions. Sounds great, right? Well, guess what? Uh, who pays for it? The little guy. Right here, you. When postal manager Jose Beloso put his Paris apartment up for sale this year, he was required to have an inspector grade the home for energy efficiency under strict rules designed to fight climate change. Beloso's building was built in the early 1900s from millstone, a porous sedimentary rock that was popular among architects of France's Belle Epoque. His apartment flunked the inspection, and under a regulation that came into force this year, the property was barred from the rental market until costly renovations are made. Oh my god. So watch out, people. This is what's coming to Canada. Beloso was ultimately forced to knock 50,000 euros, equivalent to $54,000, off his asking price to find a buyer. Consumers are starting to pay for the energy transition, and they aren't happy about it. Governments that were among the earliest in the world to adopt climate legislation tried to take the sting out of the transition by motivating consumers with subsidies. Now, however, the same capitals are cash-strapped and many are passing the bill to the consumer. Subsidies are being scaled back, taxes tied to carbon emissions are being phased in, and rules requiring expensive renovations are starting to bite. Farmers here are just totally upset about the uh, regulations being forced upon them basically make their job impossible to do efficiently or economically. Many consumers, including those who broadly support the energy transition, are unwilling to pay up. Farmers have laid siege to Paris and other European capitals over plans to remove diesel fuel subsidies. German households have rebelled against requirement to replace polluting gas boilers. The In California, sorry, homeowners and small businesses seeking to install solar panels are running up against new metering rules that cut by roughly three quarters the amount of money they can get for selling electricity back into the grid. So what's the point? If we can't get our own carbon credits and we're forced to buy all these things and there's no benefit, except uh, for the large fat cat pockets... Governments lined up a slew of climate measures years ago when interest rates were low and energy supplies seemed abundant. Now those changes are coming into force and governments are facing a new calculus. Wars in Ukraine and Gaza are forcing Western governments to spend more on defense while grappling with higher energy costs and inflation. Yeah, you need to reorganize and recalibrate your money. You can't just keep sending money to countries when your country and your people are suffering. So where is the trade-off? We're going to punish our citizens and tax the rich so much so because they were able to uh, become successful in life. So now they must pay for the lazy and unsuccessful. Because it's not people on welfare who are poor and can't work. The majority of people can work. They just choose not to because they receive a check in the mail every month. If you were to go to those people and say, hey, listen, we want you to do this. They would come up with a million reasons not to do it, even if it involved zero physical work if they're basically like we need you to write a letter or type a letter we don't care how fast it is or anything like that but we need you to do it at least eight hours a day 
They would be like, oh, I can't. My fingers don't work because they're too fat from eating or they're covered in Cheetos dust. The challenge lies in designing climate policy with geopolitical shock absorbers. French President Emmanuel Macron has suggested Europe might require a regulatory pause so its economy can absorb the impact of the Ukraine war and the European Union has re recently trimmed some of its climate measures. Yeah, park it. The world is on fire. Don't go ahead and throw fuel on it and say, well, figure it out later. Anyway, the energy transition is a scam and they'll do whatever they can to make sure you comply. They need to back off. Farm states push back on Biden's bird flu response. Well, we've been covering this for the past couple of weeks. The CDC is locked in a power struggle with key states and agricultural players as it tries to better track the virus and prevent another potential pandemic. Yeah. The farmers uh, are saying, go away. I feel fine. I feel great. I don't want you to invasively test me all the time to verify if this bird flu is around. It's just the flu. Go away. The CDC is at odds with state officials in the dairy industry over its on-the-ground response to the avian flu outbreak spreading among dairy cows, complicating President Joe Biden's efforts to track and contain a virus that has the potential to sicken millions of people. Many farmers don't want federal health officials on their property. State agricultural officials worry the federal response is sidelining animal health experts at the agricultural department, and also that some potential federal interventions threaten to hinder state and local health officials rushing, rushing to respond to the outbreaks. It's overreach. They don't need to do that. They need to back off. Texas Agricultural Commissioner Sid Miller, a former rodeo cowboy who is a possible pick to lead the USDA if the former President Donald Trump wins the presidential election, said in an interview. Texas, the first state where the bird flu was detected, has not invited the CDC to conduct epidemiological field studies there, even though its health department is open to the research, because we haven't found a dairy farm that is interested in participating, said Lara Anton, a spokesperson for the Texas Department of State Health Services. The resistance of dairy farmers is emblematic of the trust gap between key agricultural players in both red and blue states and federal health officials one that public health experts fear could hamper the nation's ability to head off the virus's threat to humans. The risk here of something going from one or two sporadic human cases to becoming something of international concern is not insignificant, CDC Principal Deputy Director Nirav Shah said at a recent Council on Foreign Relations event. We've all seen how a virus can spread around the globe before public health has even had a chance to get its shoes on. That's a risk and one that uh, we have to be mindful of. Yeah, and there he is. Democratic as well as Republican state officials shared those reservations, including that state and local health officials should continue to lead the response on the ground. Some have also pressed for USDA and its animal health experts to have more say in the process. Decouple it from FDA and CDC issue, said Pennsylvania Agriculture Secretary Russell Redding. This is a workforce concern that really ought to be expressed from the USDA and Secretary Tom Vilsack. So they're saying it's statewide. The, the government... The federals don't need to come in and control everything. No one likes a uh, government showing up on their land, whether it's FBI, CIA, USDA, whatever. No one likes when someone in a uh, shirt and tie shows up knocking on your door. Nobody. So, uh, but what's the problem? If this spreads because of a lack of trust, then whose fault is it? They're going to blame it on the farmers. Well, the farmers wouldn't let us in. Uh, we need more regulation. We need the ability to enter onto people's property and test them. Bless their hearts. CDC wanted to know everything. The concern is that it is so lengthy and so detailed that you actually just get a lot of inaccurate answers. All right, so yeah, whatever. We'll keep you posted. And this is what you look like if you do get the bird flu. Just have a look. It's just like uh, junctivitis, conjunctivitis. His eyes were bleeding on the surface due to the virus. Farm workers bleeding in eyeballs after catching bird flu in first case of transmission. So this is the Texas dairy farmer here. Thankfully, the man had very mild symptoms after contracting H5N1, but the stark image shows how the virus caused bleeding on the surface of his eyeballs. This is because the blood vessels in his eyes popped. Oh my goodness. Just like sneezing really hard. So uh, watch out for the alarmism. Uh, there is nothing to fear as of yet. Um, but the World Health Organization says this is a milestone that is of enormous concern. The images of the patient plus further details about his case were published in a report. And yeah, we've been covering this. So yeah, two people have it confirmed. Uh, no one is getting tested because no one will allow the testers onto the farms. So is it spreading? Likely. It's likely all over the gaff. All right, so Frat Boy Summer is upon us. Uh, last year was dubbed White Boy Summer. 
Uh, now it's frat boy summer. So backlash against an epidemic of arrogant, entitled women. Interesting. Let's go ahead and dive in on this. What do we have? Behold the frat boys, unapologetically saving old glory, singing the national anthem, chanting USA, 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 and rudely ridiculing the campus freaks who parade around in Hamas colors and barricade themselves in university buildings. God forbid they look like Trump voters. The display of irrepressible masculinity erupting in Gen Z is an affront to the grand societal feminization project of the left, which has only itself to blame. Frat Boy Summer is this year's backlash against an epidemic of arrogant, entitled women who have been coddled all their lives and think they're smarter and more important than they really are. Can't disagree. It is a manifestation of the growing political divide between men and women that has been evident in opinion polls for some time. There's a 10-point gap on most issues between men and women, and uh, young unmarried women in particular skew very left, while young men are becoming markedly more conservative. So, women, feminines, Democrat. Masculine men's, Republican. Women, liberal, Men conservative. Who would have guessed? Men are conservative with how they operate, finances, uh, you know, your home. Very economical and efficient. Women, liberal. Like, let's spend, let's just enjoy it. YOLO. You know, and hey, listen, I'm all about YOLO. You only live once, enjoy it. But don't take away from your future to give yourself a present. Growing Gap, the latest ABC Ipsos poll over the weekend showed Donald Trump winning the under 30s by 5 points over Joe Biden, 48 to 43%. That was entirely down to Trump's huge advantage with young men, 54% to 43%. Young women favored Biden by 3 points, 44% to 41%. Still a rather anemic vote of confidence considering all the Handmaid's Tale style propaganda being thrown at them about abortion and Trump's beastly ways. It's a nightmare scenario for Biden who has been counting on the youth vote to win him the election like he did in 2020, hence his desperate pandering to Gen Z. The, the president is splashing around billions of taxpayer dollars on student debt relief, relaxing cannabis legislation, championing trans kids as the greatest heroes of their generation, and inviting gender-fluid young TikTok influencers to VIP events at the White House. This is not your granddad's Joe Biden, but none of it can close the growing ideological gulf between the sexes which has its roots in the unjust treatment of boys and young men in recent decades. The college gender gap was a crisis when men outnumbered women up until the 1980s, but now there are three women for every two men in college. We must rejoice. You go, girl. Now there are the one million fewer men in college than in 2011. According to Pew Research, with one quarter of male Ivy Leaguers identifying as LGBT, it's sexual reparations in which nobody had a say. There is a cohort of women who are giving the fairer sex a bad name. These toxic femmes gobbled up the unjust privileges of affirmative action and the punitive fakery that the Me Too movement became and then found they were more miserable than ever. So they doubled down, offloading blame onto the patriarchy or toxic masculinity or whatever excuse they could find to avoid looking in the mirror. Absolutely. And toxic masculinity has uh, literally transformed into uh, toxic femmes. During the pandemic, they were given the name Karen as they marched around in masks enforcing petty rules or flew into aggressive rages during minor parking lot encounters. When accountability occasionally finds them, they are flabbergasted beyond belief, uh, while the rest of the world quietly revels in their comeuppance. Karine Jean Pierre is the avatar of the entitled female. The White House press secretary is simply horrible at her job. She's not on top of her material and never provides a coherent answer to reporters' questions. But instead of showing a little humility and upping her game, she does interviews boasting about how awesome she is at the hardest job in the White House. I'm a historic figure and I walk in history every day being a gay black mouthpiece. Women's colleges, the females at the University of Virginia whining it's raining when finally told to pack up their tents. The campus radical who held a press conference to demand that Columbia University supply food and water to her comrades who had barricaded themselves inside a building. This is like basic humanitarian aid said Joanna King Slutsky, a PhD student who sported the latest terroristic chic, a kefia around her neck. The academic at Emory University who screamed, I am a professor, when she was arrested for assaulting a cop. I hit him on the head very lightly to get his attention, and they grabbed me, threw me to the ground, and arrested me. Good lord. 
Caroline Folin whined as she was carted away. The activists in California who stood up at a city council meeting and threatened to kill counselors who opposed a, a Gaza ceasefire resolution. We'll see you at your house. We'll murder you, she fiercely vowed. Next time we saw Rita Patel, she was bawling her eyes out in court after being arrested and charged with threatening state officials. It's something called accountability, people. Yeah, you run your mouth, you act violent, and there will be punishment, usually. Depends if you're in a democratic state. Uh, there, These are not people anyone can admire. They believe that they are entitled to privileges and protections they did not earn or do not deserve. The losers in the equation have been young men, especially if they are white and heterosexual and wish to remain male with their genitalia intact. Yeah, it's a major attack on white heterosexual male. They even give them a name, cisgender. Like, whatever, I'm not cis. I'm heterosexual male. I'm the opposite of you. I'm an op. You're an alt, and I'm up. Alternative lifestyle versus the opposite of the alternative lifestyle. Boom. Alts versus ops. A police officer was seen sprinting down a street in Paisley, apparently being pursued by a man with a power tool in him. What? A pair of police officers have been injured, and a man has been arrested after authorities flocked to a street in Scotland to reports of a chainsaw-wielding man apparently chasing officers down a road in broad daylight. Footage have had been circulated online, a police officer sprinting away down the street in Paisley, apparently being pursued by a man running with a chainsaw. Yeah, okay. Uh, there's a still of the image. Good lord. Straight out of Scarface. Let's have a look. Let's see exactly what's happening here. Yeah, so you got some dude with a chainsaw. I don't know if it's if it's uh, turned on by the sound of it. This guy's behind a pane of glass, it looks like. But anyway, he's chasing a cop. And why would a cop be running from a guy with a chainsaw? Because uh, UK cops are bobbies, and they don't have guns. They got little bobby sticks. What are you going to do with it? Nothing. You're going to run, terrified. Unbelievable. What is going on over in Europe? Well, meanwhile, in Dublin, Irish citizens turn out in big numbers to protest mass immigration. Crowd is chanting Sinn Féin are traitors. So that would be their government there uh, who's in charge. Let's go ahead and have a look at this. So a uh, very raucous crowd there, very vocal, and uh, basically stating that, hey, government, uh, we don't believe in you anymore and what you've been doing by uh, gaslighting us and saying that we're bigoted or racist because we don't want all of these immigrants coming into our country and being favored and catered to. What about us, the people that live here? You know, why are we being left in the wayside for all these immigrants who do nothing and just take and take and take? It's not like back in the day when the Irish went to America in search of a better life and worked for it. These people are in search of a better life that comes on a piece of plastic debit card, okay? And then refill. Where's our spending money? That's what they're asking for. Boom. All right. Well, guess what? Welcome to the beautiful and sunny Los Angeles. We hope you enjoy your stay. Here's a drive through uh, Los Angeles at what looks to be just after dusk. Let's go ahead and see what these people are at. So you can see there's fires in the middle of the street. Two just on this street across the street looks like a garbage can is lit up. And there's tents everywhere. So, like, I don't know what's going on in California, Los Angeles, but uh, it's happening all over. And, man, when I was a kid, if you try to pitch a tent somewhere in town, the cops would come and just get rid of you. So what happened? They defunded the police, and then they didn't have enough police to send there to deal with the homelessness. They spent over, I don't even know, I think it was $20 billion. It might just be one. But billions of dollars, none of it's accounted for. Talking about the houses that they're going to build, these mini houses for homeless people, it's going to cost $2 million just to maintain them. And each one is $113,000 each. Good Lord. 
All right, officials described telltale buzz that led to last-minute scrub of Boeing Starliner's crew launch. So if you tuned in yesterday's episode, uh, Boeing is in the space race, and they're planning on sending manned ship up in this little capsule here uh, to space. And this is all the while doors are blowing off their aircraft, and tires are blowing out upon takeoff and landing. Uh, whistleblowers are mysteriously uh, dying of infections and uh, suicide when they claim that they're absolutely not suicidal. Two NASA astronauts had reached the final hours before a long-awaited launch attempt aboard Boeing's Starliner capsule, the first crewed mission of the new spacecraft. But the mission was scrubbed about two hours before the countdown clock hit zero because of an issue with a valve on the Atlas V rocket, a workhorse vehicle built in Alabama by United Launch Alliance that will fire the Starliner capsule to space. So the people in the capsule will be the astronauts, and the capsule was what was built by Boeing. So that's the part I would be most concerned about. I'm sure that like literally beads of sweat dripping down the astronaut's head as they finally came out and said, hey, listen, we're not taking off today. Oh, God, I'm not going to die today in this tin can. Good things are worth waiting for, and we'll get a chance to see that rocket and spacecraft get off the pad here soon, said NASA's Associate Administrator for Space Operations, Ken Bowersox, during a news briefing Monday night. We still have to gather more data. We don't have a definitive plan for you yet. This will come as soon as we can provide it. So, a uh, big, huge nothing burger on top of a rocket, and uh, it's plain bread and uh, barely any beef. Before the valve issue arose, Starliner, which Boeing designed to rival SpaceX's prolific crew Dragon capsule was set to take off for its inaugural crewed test run at 10.34. Blah, blah, whatever. It didn't make it off, but uh, the Falcon 9 did, and it sent some satellites up there because Elon is the man. He's the rocket man, the true rocket man. All right, like and subscribe. Let's get this mask off so you can see the real man. Sigma Tiger, signing out.